Hey, so welcome back. We've been working through some ideas in an electricity-based unit, and so at this point we are ready to start talking about electric potential and potential difference. And so that's the point of this lesson here. Where we come from, we've just talked about electric potential energy, and I can put up a link to that lesson, so you can take a look at that later. This lesson we're going to be talking about, again, electric potential, potential difference. And lastly, where are we going? We're going to be talking about capacitance and current next. So let's start by reminding ourselves of what we mean by gravitational potential energy. This is an easy concept, and sometimes you'll see it written as potential energy with a sub G dealing with gravitation, or a U sub G, or just potential energy because it's the most common type of potential energy that's dealt with in high school physics. And that's just equal to mgh, so the mass times gravitational acceleration, which on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared, times the height. So if you have a more massive object, your potential energy goes up. If this is a bigger asteroid or something, you would have more potential energy. If the height goes up, then you would have more potential energy. So that's what we mean by gravitational potential energy. If we apply those same ideas in an analogous sense to electric potential energy, we might make a drawing kind of like this. And like I said, this is something I've gone over previously, so you can take a look at my screencast on this. But just a quick summary, we've used an equation here to describe what's going on. This is Coulomb's constant, the charge of the first object, charge of the second object, and the distance between the center of both objects. So if you take a look at this, we can talk about the potential energy of this object, this charged object, in reference to this blue charged object here at its initial position. And we can compare that, let's say, with its final position. And we can talk about its potential energy. If I asked you right now, do you think it'll have more potential energy at its initial position or its final? What would you answer? Hopefully you would answer at its final location, it'll have more potential energy. So the question would be, well, how would something rise up from its initial position to its final position then? And the answer is you would have to do work on that in a physics sense, or you could say, you apply a force over a distance to move that object, and that would be adding energy to the system, and then that energy would be stored as more potential energy if it ended up out here. So if you understood what I just said, then you understand the basis for electric potential energy. We're going to use that as a springboard to talk about electric potential and potential difference today. So let's get to it. So this idea of electric potential energy is useful, but we could do something even more useful. And so let's think about what we could do here. If we divided out this charge right here, then we would be talking about something going on in this three-dimensional space that's independent of whatever test charge we put in there because we can divide out that charge. So we're learning something more important about this area of space you could say over here. And that concept is going to be called an electric potential. So how much potential energy a charged object would have divided by its own test charge. And if we do that, then it doesn't matter what test charge we use. We're still going to have this useful concept work for us of the electric potential. And that's what we're doing. So we can build on our understanding of electricity and say, yeah, let's use this idea of electric potential. It is a useful idea. We're going to take it one step further, though, actually. Before we do, I do want to define it. And I've written the definition here. I would highly encourage you to read this and help yourself to review this. All right, let's continue. Now, an even more useful concept, if we take it one step further, is if we find the difference in electric potential between two points. So we have a point right here, our initial point, and our final point right here. We could say that's our potential difference between these two points. And what's different with this equation and this equation down here, notice we just have the delta value over here. So potential difference is the difference in electric potential at two different points. And the reason why this is so much more useful is because instead of some arbitrary position being used to calculate your potential energy electric over here, what you're doing is you're comparing between two different points right here in space and that is incredibly useful. And there are different ways of calculating this, but if you look at it between two different points in space, it can help you to understand what we mean by a potential difference. Okay, and so I've rewritten the potential difference up here. And I do want to point out there are a couple of equations that we can use moving forward. The first one I want to introduce is a very simple equation, but it takes some work to be able to understand what we're talking about here. 
So I did do a screencast in the past on electric potential energy, and I did use this equation over here, and I talked about two parallel plates, and this is maybe more important than you realize because this is how batteries and capacitors work, and so it is important to understand if you have two charged plates that are parallel to each other, what's going on in there. And one of the things that's interesting about this is that you're going to have an electric field that is uniform the entire way between them. If you think about it, if you had a small positive charge right here, it would have a greater force from this positive side of repulsion and a lesser force from this side over here of attraction. But as it moves over here to this part over here, it would now proportionally have a greater force of attraction to this negatively charged plate and a lesser force of repulsion from this positively charged plate. So those forces essentially even out and effectively you have a constant electric field in between two parallel charge plates. So we talked about this and we also talked about if you have this object here going from this position to this position, it would be effectively losing potential energy, right? Assuming it's a positive charge right here, it would be losing potential energy. This is kind of like saying if you drop the rock and as it falls, it loses potential energy. But by analogy, we're going to take it one step further and say, well, this is our equation over here. If we divide out this Q value, then we can talk about potential difference in a uniform electric field. So that is independent of whatever small positive test charge or negative for that matter, whatever small test charge we have, that Q value has been divided out and we end up with the potential difference in a uniform electric field. This equation is not as commonly used, and it's actually really easy to use. You're multiplying two numbers together, and that's it. But it's important to understand what's going on. We're going to use a more commonly used equation, and I will do an example problem with that. Okay, and so this is the more commonly used form of the equation right here. Potential difference is equal to Kc, so that's Coulomb's constant, times the value of the point charge divided by the distance to the point charge. So this is very similar to when we learned about electric fields. You're talking about a point in space and its potential difference between that point and infinity. So between that point and all the way out to infinity, you could say, what is its potential difference at that location? And that's how you would go about using this equation. I've gone ahead and set up this problem and made a little more complex because I've got two charges here that we're going to be dealing with. And I'm basing this on a practice problem that I found in a textbook, Sir Wayne Fawn's Holt Physics, which is an excellent textbook. And so we're just going to make this into a 3, 4, 5 right triangle to make the math easy. And so let's see how to go about solving this problem. So if you take a look over here, this is our given equation. And we can just start plugging in our values. So this is going to be our Q1 value. This is our Q2 value. We've got Kc times the charge for Q1 divided by the distance in between these objects here. And if you do the math, you end up with this is your answer. And you're going to do the same thing for Q2. And then my question is, what would you guess that we do with that information? You may not know because I haven't written out the problem, but you may have been able to anticipate, well, to find the overall potential difference at that location, would we just add up those potential differences from those two charges? And the answer is yes, that's what you would do. It's very similar to figuring out what the net electric field is at a point in space. We're doing that here for a potential difference. So we go ahead and we start adding those values together and we end up with a value of 7,000 volts. So that's going to be our answer to our example problem. I have summarized these concepts in a screen and I've done that because these concepts sound very similar and are hard to learn. When you're first learning them, the concepts kind of run together. I will say a couple things about this. Before I do move on to that screen, I do want to point out that a potential difference is the thing that causes charges to move. So we're going to get into that. This is describing the cause of moving charges. So moving charges are basically electricity. And so we're getting there to the cause of electricity. And we can understand now things like capacitance and current and so on. But now let's move on to summarizing what we're talking about. So these are some of the concepts that we've been talking about in this unit. I have put them into a table here. If you want to get a screenshot of this or print this out or something like that, essentially this is a summary of some of the major concepts we've talked about. I do want to stress one thing if you're looking at this. Take your time. I guess I'll stress two things. 
take your time with this in reviewing this and secondly when in doubt look at the units so you'll get to a problem and you'll say i don't know because all of these things are just kind of running together in my head list out what you have take it step by step and pay close attention to units units are there to help you when you don't understand what's going on if you're looking at the units they are there to help you to understand i mean they really are to describe carefully what we're dealing with but also to help the reader understand what to do next for these problems so i hope this has been helpful i'm going to be doing more screencasts in this unit i will try to remember to put a link to the next in this series and i hope you have a great day thanks for listening